we'll have a little bit of discussion uh, in regard to that. Uh, SRWA stands for the Santa Rita Water Association. The uh, Tucson Water Department um, notified SRWA of which Sycamore Vista Masters Homeowners Association is a member of SRWA. There are five other members. Um, they're all different developments within this general area. So Sycamore Canyon, um, it, it, there's a number of them that are, are members. Um, they were notified by Tucson Water that there were only 200 water connections left in this area. Um, in order to get more than the 200 water connections, SRWA has to uh, improve the um, wells. There are three wells that currently service this area. Uh, they're referred to, interestingly enough, as H1, H2, and H3. Uh, the expectation is that H1, if improved uh, at a cost of roughly $3 million, uh, should provide enough to increase the number of, they refer to them as EDUs, but essentially they're just water meters connections. Um, uh, uh, by increasing the amount available to up to a total of 45. The original um, agreement for this for this area was that there could be 35. Um, if they increase it to 45, that's another 1,000 connects that would be there plus the 200 that are still remaining. So there'd be about 1,200 uh, connects that would be available. Um, the uh, connects will be allocated based on the membership uh, uh, interest that each one of the community, each one of the members has in SRWA. Um, and right now, Sycamore Vista Master Homeowners Association has a 35% interest. So 35% of the additional connects will be available to this community. Having um, said that, 35% of the cost will be borne by Sycamore Vista Masters Homeowners Association. Um, we, we, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna let you come up and you can talk in, 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 in regards to any of that. And then I'm happy to stay around afterwards and, and go to any kind of detail um, that you guys want in regard to this. Um, the, uh, cost, uh, therefore, would be 35% of the $3 million, so roughly $1.3 million will be borne by Sycamore Vista Masters Homeowners Association. Um, you'll see as an agenda item, there'll be a discussion of the special assessments of the uh, all the HOAs to cover that cost. Um, currently, I, and I'll just go ahead and, uh, and, and describe right now, currently what's under consideration uh, what's under consideration is a, an assessment on all lot owners in uh, Sycamore Vista. Um, there are issues with whether or not current homeowners should or should not be included in that. Um, that will be taken up at a meeting, so there won't be a decision made on that uh, right now. The other way of handling it is to have a loan, so Sycamore Vista Master Homeowners Association go out and borrow the money um, and then repay it out of um, sales that take place in the community, charge a uh, facility fee, if you will, on every sale that takes place. So in essence, nobody can sell their house or can sell their lot without having to pay a fee to pay off their proportionate share of, of the loan. Um, and a third way to do it would be to limit the charge only to those lot owners, not homeowners, because they effectively got a water meter already, so they're not interested in water meters. Um, and that'll be the, the tenor of the discussion. At this point, what we're considering is um, an uh, authorization of the president, that's me, to sign the documentation necessary to amend the Santa Rita Water Association Agreement which is to amend the agreement with the City of Tucson Water to agree to make the payments for the uh, improvements to the wells and to obtain from the City of uh, Tucson Water the additional uh, uh, water meter connections that will be available in the community. Um, so, do I have a motion to allow the President to do that? Is there a second? There's a second. 
All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed. Okay. Um, we have um, the election of officers. Um, the slate that's been presented is the three people you see in front of you again: uh, Ronnie Devora, Steve Russo, and Ken Silverman. Um, I don't think we have to describe who we are. I mean, we've been here often enough, but you should know that by now. Um, and so I would um, accept the motion to approve the slate as submitted. Oh, there's a motion. That's good. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Okay. Um, we have a uh, ratification resolution, which would be to um, approve all of the actions taken uh, by the Sycamore Vista Master Homeowners Association and its directors since the last meeting. Um, and I would need a motion to approve that resolution. Is there a second? All, right. all those in favor? Aye. Approved. Okay. Now, this is the time now for uh, homeowners' comments and questions. And so, if we can, we have. Uh, we, we, we'll need your card. Um, and by the way, we're this, the are um, we are um, guided by the newly revised uh, open meeting law requirements in terms of holding meetings. Uh, we've been advised by our new council, Wendy Ehrlich, that we should get um, comment cards, addresses, and names for people so that they become part of the record. And they may stand up and address the board and ask any questions that they have. So I, I actually need a name and address. Okay. And address, okay. Yeah. Uh, at least, certainly at least a name. Okay. Um, the address is at, at, is at their discretion. So. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Mr. Perry is first, and the pictures go along. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob Perry, do you want me to just read the question, or do you want to? That's fine. Okay. What will be done to correct the dumpster problem on South Courts Redford Drive? And SG Posey. SG Posey, okay. They are being used as private parties to dump trash in the dumpster to overflowing and then onto the ground. Um, the, um, I guess the, the answer is our management company has been working to clean up not only this problem, but apparently there's been some significant wildcatting uh, in terms of dumpster uh, droppings uh, that the city has come out or the county's come out and identified where people just kind of drive out into uh, areas and offload their mattresses with the bed bugs and the rest of the stuff and so forth. Um, and so uh, what, we've, what we've done is we've instructed the management company to go ahead and, and find anybody who is um, doing that if we can figure out who it is. As you well can imagine, the problem that we deal with there is that if somebody comes out and dumps stuff in the middle of the night, there really isn't anything we can do. Um, us, under, under current law, if it is on a landowner's property, it's their responsibility. Um, however, um, we have made an internal decision that we will ask the homeowners association to deal with it, not try and identify who the landowner is, uh, because there's there's a sense of unfairness there. I mean, the landowner didn't do anything. They just owned the lot. Somebody came and dropped it on the lot. Um, and so we have the HOA um, management company who will do the cleanup. So they've been authorized to go ahead and do the cleanup. That's built into their budget. And to coordinate with the city or the county to stop that. So what I would say is if you see it going on, call Kim or Chapman Management. Uh, we'll try and get it stopped. Uh, you know, at the source if we can. If you see it after the fact, we will uh, take action to clean it up. I'm not above taking down license numbers of the uh, people that are doing you. it. Absolutely, <laughs> that helps. But I have to tell you, there really is there, there really is little um, that the HOA can do other than correct the problem. 
we we actually have been cited by the county on two different occasions for cleanups on land. They cited the wrong parties because they're supposed to cite the landowner, but they don't know who the landowners are. And we decided not to go after that particular landowner. We just turned it over to the HOA to take it Because once it hits the ground, it's considered litter. It's in the dumpster. That's between the people that own or rent the dumpster and the person putting it in. Once the trash is on the ground. Yeah, these are some really good pictures. I mean, once it starts spilling over here. And they actually put stuff on the ground. Right. Because they can't lift it into the dumpster. Then it's considered littering. Then if you take down their license number, you can turn it over to the county sheriff. And then the sheriff can trace it that way. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything negative about the sheriff's office. I mean, they do a great job. But I will tell you that in our conversations, this ranks somewhere right above. We don't care. And we listen well. So it's right in between there in terms of where it is. The commitment is the HOA will clean it up and will correct it. I know that's kind of after the fact. It's very difficult to try and stop it. But we have found no interest from the sheriff's department in citing individuals, even when names have been given or license numbers. And I understand their position is we're too busy doing other stuff to really follow up on that. But the best we can do from the HOA standpoint is when you see it happening, if you see it out in the middle of what looks like the desert, I mean, it's still part of the community. And you tell the management company and they will arrange for somebody to clean it. Okay. Do we have another card? And before you, if I could just interject real quick. We have had a little bit of progress on the Ranch Road Cleanup Project. And I believe that the county has approved the work on that. We have had a little bit of progress on the Ranch Road Cleanup Project. And I believe that the county has approved the work on that. And I believe that the county has approved the work on that. And I believe that the county has approved the work on that. They're trying to screen it in and they're trying to, you know, so they are responding. They've done a very good job on that, by the way, because people don't have enough intestinal fortitude to drive into a closed area and dump their stuff. So they hit these two dumpsters. They emptied them yesterday. And there's one that's full already. And then, of course, the dumpster people aren't responsible for picking up what's on the ground. Just for what's in the dumpster. So they just, yeah, because they just have a machine that picks it up. Correct. But also, some of the dumpsters aren't located on homeowners' lots. Right. And so that's one of the things that we're trying to do. And so we're trying to do that. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do. They are actually located in the east area between the sidewalk and what will become the fence line. Actually, even though it's an easement. Then it's KB's problem. Well, actually, even though it's an easement, it's still a lot of owners. Yeah, I mean, but that would then be, you know, do we go to a lot of owners and say it's really still you, the lot owner, that has to do it. The more direct approach is to contact the management company. They'll clean it up after the fact. If the dumpsters are overflowing, they'll arrange for somebody to come and dump them earlier and pay the costs associated with that. Until you write down a license number and it goes to the sheriff's department and somebody actually gets cited for it, there's going to be no incentive for anybody to stop doing it. Yeah. And at least this is in a dumpster where we can see it and we know kind of where it's at. It's the people who drive off into the middle of the desert and offload at 2 in the morning, you know, all their mattresses and, you know, junk because they don't want that tipping fee at the land area. That's the problem. Will just a license plate number do? I honestly think if you had pictures of the individual, you saw them doing it, and you had license numbers, you would still rank between I don't care and leave me alone. I'll let you know how. Yeah. I think that's pretty much the way it is because there's just bigger issues there. Okay. We have from Adolfo Guzman, we have a question. Will there be enough connections eventually to satisfy all the lots? The answer to that is yes. The amendment that is being proposed with the city of Tucson Water actually extends over a much greater period than just the H1 improvement. It does contemplate the improvements to H2, the improvements to H3, and the possibility of drilling another well, H4, to service what would be all of the projected lots for all of the developers in this area. It's scheduled out over a significant period of time and obviously would only take place if 
it, as right now, the amendment's taking place, but there's only 200 connections left. So obviously it has to be dealt with. So once the additional 1,000 are used up, or it gets down towards the end, then the next stage would uh, be so, But that would be an additional cost. I mean, the cost that's being discussed right now is $3 million to get the, uh, uh, the additional connections from uh, Tucson Water. To get, you know, ultimately, I think it's the, the additional 5,000 connects, because I think there's a total of like 9,300 connects out there. Um, in order to get that, we're talking, you know, anywhere from five to ten million. Um, but that will be addressed as each one of the, uh, the connects start to get down towards the end again. Okay. Um, Roy McCarthy. Uh, review the election of director, directors. Uh, directors. Correct name on the ballot. Did okay. We, right. Did we go through the election of directors for the homeowners association? For, for not for, just for the Masters Homeowners Association, we we that's where we're at right now. We will then do each one of the homeowners associations as we move forward. Okay, Amanda Taylor, what can be done about parking barking dogs overnight and early morning? They have these little collars. My dog has this little thing. It shocks them. Not, they don't bark anymore. But short of that, um, you I think it's a violation. Uh, that's probably more a violation of the noise ordinance. So, you know, that's, once again, I would think the Sheriff's Department is not going to be very sympathetic to coming out or being an animal control in regard to that. But that's one area you can go. But you can notice, uh, you know, let the, the management company know, and um, they would uh, send out, you know, please keep your dog from barking and that kind of stuff. If it continues on, it really is a civil matter between the, you know, the two parties, and they end up having a good deal with it. Mm -hmm. I've had to deal with that uh, a couple of times with a couple of different homeowners. And the uh, Sheriff's Department, I went down here to uh, the post down here, mm -hmm. and I, I talked to them, and they said that's not in their responsibility. Mm -hmm. not to do the same thing as you. But uh, they said that the animal control Team Animal Control is another place you can call, and if it's if it becomes a conti continuing nuisance, they do have the authority to find the um, the dog owner. Mm -hmm. um, Does an HOA has a uh, and, and the HOA can send out notices, and then you can be brought in front of a hearing, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the HOA if, if, which HOA you're in. You can be brought in front of one of the hearing uh, committees to uh, determine whether they would assess the fine uh, against you or not for doing it. So they don't have to be, like according to the HOA rules, they don't have to be brought in at a certain time, they can just literally live outside. The dog? In the backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and not that. be inside. Yeah. And that's there, there are, yeah, there, I mean, there, there's no rules saying what you do or don't do with your pet. But it would be more of like, okay, they don't have to use water, shelter, kind of thing with the animal control. If they're being abused in any way, shape, or form, I mean, I think actually being out here, any place actually, you can go and right. you leave the dog outside, but that's abuse. <coughs> you know, that's just, there's then they're just, they they're just coyote, you know, uh, they, at that point. Yeah. Just to give additional information to that, we've dealt with it in our community. If you keep a log signs that the barking is occurring and the duration of the barking, when you go to animal control, then they have something to act with to go after their own. There is mm -hmm. county laws if you look up in the county ordinances, um, you can find the information, but that log will be your best plan. And that's probably where you have to where you have to go and you really and, do it. And, yeah. and, you know, yeah. You hope that would be the case. Yeah. And uh, even for the um, abuse that's outside in the water and stuff, you know, yes. uh, Sandy Jameson asks, um, number two meets speed bumps. Mm -hmm. Other people are, are racing through there, um, and how do we uh, go about getting that done? Um, I've already dealt with, I've been dealing with the county for two years on yeah. this issue. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible process to go through with the county. Um, it's their roads. Um, they have very specific rules about when they will and when they won't and what they're supposed to look like Nobody and how they're supposed to be built. Um, and short of that, um, you don't get speed bumps. 
because you just keep calling them and calling them and get somebody out. Um, my experience, not with Sycamore Whiskey, but from the old neighborhood I used to live in, um, is until there were, you know, like three accidents, um, big bumps didn't, you know. Now, we were successful in, in my old neighborhood uh, of getting a, um, a sheriff. There was just one for, you know, they stop, you know, and people would just, you know, blow through, you know, go through it at you know, 50 miles an hour and it's where the kids would congregate for the bus to go to school and it was dangerous. We were successful on a couple of occasions getting the cop to sit out there and just, you know, just give tickets and you know, that seemed to help, you know. But, you know, three months later people have completely forgotten that that happened and they did the same thing. Um, we finally, after, I, was, I built there in 85, somewhere around 2002 we got to by that time, of course, my kids were <laughs> so, so that was the end of that story. So, um, all right, uh, this is Sandy again. Uh, will the connections um, be controlled by the county? If so, why are we paying for it? Um, actually, the county controls the total number of connections mm -hmm. that they make available. SRWA controls how many are allocated to its members. So when you pay for it, the county says there's, you know, 1,200 that are available. The agreement with SRWA says of the 1,200, these much, these, you know, your 35 percent of that are made available. To <laughs> so that's how it, that's kind of how it moves forward. Um, and so, you, you know, it's an imperfect system because the, this the entire water region is what they call a, uh, oh, I forgot the name, I learned more than I wanted to learn about this stuff. Um, it's, not, it, it's, a, it's not one of their um, accepted subsystems, it's an outside. It's like, you know, a, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, a, yeah, it, it is. It's a, it, it, it's a uh, unserv it's, it's not part of their service area, it's outside their service area. So anything they do out here is in their complete discretion. I mean, they could effectively at any time go, well, we're not going to do anything. It's period. It doesn't make any difference. Because uh, they have no obligation to. It's the uh, middle man that's controlling. The the, so that's the best you do is you keep talking to them on the basis of, well, if you do this, you'll get all your costs you know, reimbursed and you'll do that. But it's outside their service. This is not their service area. Um, and the only way to change that to where you had certainty would be to create your own water district. Um, and I don't think there's anybody interested in creating their own water district. Certainly none of the developers who are part of SRWA <coughs> want to create their own water district. Uh, so it's an imperfect system, but it does allow for ongoing connects. So now, once this amendment is done, once the mechanism for uh, paying for it, once the, the, the um, uh, work on H1 is done, there will be additional connects available. And that's their commitment that they then make. So they sign the agreement. Okay. Um, with that, we'll adjourn the Sycamore Vista Master Homeowners Association. We generally take these in order, so the next one would be the Sycamore Vista number unit two homeowners association. Uh, there's good news and there's bad news associated with that. The good news is that most of Sycamore Vista Unit 2 has been built out. There are down to very few lots that are left that have not been built. Um, uh, the bad news is many of the homeowners did not elect to, uh, to show up today. As a result of that, we lacked a quorum, and so that meeting isn't going to be held. Sorry, because we have one of the board members here. Talk to me after. Uh, so we, there is a mechanism under the new uh, open meeting law that says if you fail to get a quorum the first time, you can come back and seek a quorum for a public meeting at 50% of the um, uh, homeowners for the second time. So we will then call a special meeting to try and have the meeting with a reduced quorum. Um, it's typically been uh, easy to have meetings in the past because in order to certify a quorum, the majority lot owner shows up, which is NT Properties, of which I'm the manager, and that creates a quorum. 
that is no longer true in unit two. Unit two will require the actual homeowners to decide to come to a meeting. Um, and they elected not to respond to this one. So, so we'll move on to uh, unit five. Um, six, yes. Well, if, if, if you can never get a quorum for a homeowners association, for a board, for a board, then you just, well, no, no, you all, your board's in place. Your board will continue to have its meeting. The only way the board changes is if the homeowners get together and change the board, so the board can continue to uh, operate. So we will have board meetings. Okay, that won't change. Um, if you never have a homeowners meeting, you are basically living with the same board, nothing changes, and they handle all the business. Okay. So that's what I said, it's not, it's that, that's not necessarily a, a, a bad result. At some point, there will be enough communication with the homeowners that you'll be able to get them to it. I don't know how long it took the date, but eventually there was enough interaction between neighbors and so forth that they became its own cohesive group. I assume that will happen with two at some point. What do you need for a form? Number two, you need 51. 51 percent to show up. Actually, just 51 homeowners. Yeah, 51 homeowners. Right. Oh, is that 51 homeowners? Yeah. So, 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 this one. <laughs> Damn, if we had a family of 10, it would be great. Count the kids and do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just no, so, you, so you know, number two, we only had seven. So I may send you out on the streets next time. Yeah. Knock on doors. All right, so Sycamore Vista Unit 5, we're going to call that to order. Do we have a quorum? We do have a we quorum do. for five. Okay, introducing the board. I don't think we really need to go through that again, but if you know, anybody doesn't know who we are by now. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes from last uh, year. Is there a second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Um, community update. Uh, I want to discuss a lawsuit that's been filed against Sycamore Vista HOA. Um, there has been a lawsuit filed and served on Sycamore Vista uh, HOA number five. I think we have back there um, uh, copies of the judgment, or we have you know, anybody would like to look at it. A similar lawsuit was filed back in 2004 against Sycamore Vista Unit 8, um, and it essentially alleged that the CCNRs were invalid and you could not move forward with developing or just a unit five the way that it, it was done. Um, while eight is not what the lawyers call race judicata because it was Sycamore Vista eight, it is addresses exactly the same issues that are addressed in Sycamore Vista five. Um, however, um, the argument has been made that the amendments that were done in 2004 are invalid, uh, which was the argument that was made with, against uh, Sycamore Vista unit eight. Um, that lawsuit, uh, will have to be defended by Sycamore Vista um, uh, Homeowners Association. Um, in order to defend that, uh, Sycamore Vista uh, Unit 5 will have to engage counsel, um, which they've done before when they uh, brought actions against the um, contractor for the sewer and they brought actions against the uh, civil engineer who had done the, uh, uh, the soils testing. Um, so, uh, in order to provide a fund to pay for the lawyers, we are going to uh, request that a special assessment be made in the amount of $500 per lot for um, legal fees. We'll create a uh, legal defense fund uh, to pay for uh, that. Um, and we expect that the litigation will probably be ongoing for anywhere from 18 months to 24 months until we ultimately get a resolution of, uh, of, of that litigation. Um, so, uh, is there a motion to approve the special assessment? You move to do that? Okay, do I have a second? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Um, we have the election of officers. There's a slate of officers, which once again are these three people here. Um, I would take a motion to accept the slate as presented. Motion? Is there a second? Yeah, a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we have the same ratification resolution to ratify all the actions taken on behalf of the association by uh, the directors. Um, do I have a motion to approve that? Motion. 
All in favor? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay, time for comments. Do we have um, uh, anybody who wishes to speak to the board on anything involving Sycamore Vista Unit 5? Are you sure? No? Okay, I uh, will move to adjourn the meeting. The motion and adjourn. Okay. Uh, Sycamore Vista Unit 7. Uh, I'm, I'm just giving them in, in order. Um, call that meeting to order. Do we have a certification of the forum yet? Yes, we have okay. quorum. Um, you have met the board um, and you have met the management company. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? All in favor? Is there a second? Do it a little slow. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, we have a slate of officers. Can I get a motion to approve the um, slate of officers? As okay. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Say aye. Okay. There's a ratification resolution. Is there a motion to ratify the action? You have to be quicker. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on seven? Okay. How is? You might ask a question in seven. Sure, go right ahead. Uh, could, you, could we just have a card for the record? Is that okay? Okay, so Kim will help you out. Okay, well she'll get that to you and we'll do that. Let me let me take this one right now. How is... I, I can't read this. How is roads going in Unit 5? How is building roads going in Unit 5? How will these be built? Are we talking about uh, roads? How soon five? will the houses be and, and the roads finish? Okay, well, this is Unit 5, but I'll go ahead and, and just uh, give, you know, give an update you know, in terms of Unit 5. Um, unit 5 is being uh, developed in phases. Um, there's a 50 lot phase that is, it, it, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the site in general, but it would be the uh, southwest portion of, that's contiguous with Unit 2. Um, and you probably have seen the dirt movers out there and the roads going in. And we expect that, that uh, fi those 50 lots will be done um, uh, by May 15th, give or take. Um, the planned phasing is five phases. Um, those 50 lots, then 70 lots directly north of that, 50 lots directly east of that, and then phase four and phase five come down uh, south off of the upper portion of, of that. Um, there will be a special meeting um, held um, probably beginning of May um, or around May 15th when the first phase is finished. The first phase will be finished, as I said, we're expecting to be finished May 15th. Um, and that special meeting will provide for amendments to the CCNRs that will allow lots in Unit 5 to be assessed um, on a specific phase basis. Um, the old uh, CCNRs, the way assessments were done by the prior developer was to assess all of Unit 5, collect all the money, and then develop it in phases. And of course, if you were the fourth or the fifth phase, you were probably thinking, you know, I've got to give you my assessment up front, and it's three years before you get to me over there. So we will do the assessments specifically targeted, so the 50 lots will be assessed. Um, the 50 lots will pay for the improvements that they get, and they will do that after they're finished, not before they're finished. So we won't go to phase two and say, well, there's going to be assessments, and we expect to build, or we hope to build. They will be done and then the assessment will be done based on the actual costs that were incurred in finishing that. Right now we expect the cost for the 50 lots to finish to be somewhere, our numbers are about $17,150 and we will fine tune that with actual uh, numbers at the assessment. So the assessment will not be in round numbers. It won't be you're being assessed 22.5 or 35. Or you'll be assessed exactly what the costs were to finish that. So if you're in phase one, two, three, four, or five, in order to, if you want to know how it's projected to be phased out, you probably would need to come to my office and I'd show you the map as to how we're looking at it. Um, and that might be driven, that might change somewhat 
depending on what we hear from the engineer in terms of you know, uh, topographical uh, requirements in terms of, of building things. So um, uh, at, right now, you could go out and look at the 50 lots. That, as I said, you should see roads going in there. You should see uh, water meters. You should see that those lots. They will be finished in the next two to three uh, weeks. Those 50 lots are under option right now. Uh, 40 of those lots are under option with the outdoor. So the expectation is they will start building somewhere in this summer. Their, ex their expectations, as they've described them, is they want to try and start building for the school. Uh, given this wonderful school that's here, they want to start building for uh, September, October, and November. Um, there is no eff no efforts right now to develop phase two, three, or four. Um, that would only come if demand is driven by sales that happens with the airport. Has Horton pledged amount they were going to pay for them? Yeah, Horton. The Horton deal uh, right now, uh, they are buying lots at thirty six thousand dollars. They are buying lots at thirty two thousand dollars a lot in unit two. That's pretty much where they are. And, and so that's that you know, that's better than when there were no six. Mm -hmm. So two is done and we're still moving forward with uh, trying to develop five. So did you did go ahead and ask the question. The the, the, the papers for, for their well, I was uh, seeking a timeline of events for unit seven, just a wild guess. <laughs> A wag? Is that what we want? A wild ass guess? Okay, if you, if you want a wag, I can give you a wag. Um, the seven, of course, would be the next <coughs> developable uh, site. It, it would be in competition with 8.3. Those are the two that are most likely to follow five. In order for development in 8.3 or seven to take place, you have to sell out. Um, Unit five. Um, unit two took five years to sell. What do you project number five? Three years. <laughs> okay, a little better, but not great. So, and at that point, the de decision would be: Is it eight point three? Because you already have the roads in eight that go out to where the rest of that would be. Or is it seven? Because seven's uniquely located right off of you know Del Toro. Can you find 8.3, please? 8.3? Are you familiar with um, all the houses that are out there in Unit 8? On the south side of Toro. Uh, on the south side of Toro. If you go through that subdivision, go to the very end of that subdivision, 8.3 is the remaining 200 lots or so that are just below that, just south of that. You tell it's already down there on Toro. No. 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 Um, unit 5 is the only unit that has that is what we call partially completed with utilities and sewer. Everything in seven and everything in eight point three, nine, ten north and ten south will have to be done from uh, scratch. And part of part of the issue in terms of whether development happens there at all is that if you start from scratch, you are more than thirty six thousand dollars into the dirt. You have builders who only pay you thirty-six thousand dollars for the dirt. It's kind of silly to do that. So, uh, but in three years, that may be an entirely different approach. Um, all right. Um, I, I had a question from a, a, a lot owner who would like my assistance in helping them sell lots. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do that at the HOA meeting, but I'm happy to take that up uh, after after the meeting. Um, Sycamore Vista Unit 7, where were we? Did we finish it? I need you to help me, did you write down? Where down 7? Okay. You know, I should be my glasses if you're like this small. Hey, I've got reading glasses if you want. I do need them. Is the same company 7? Just ask me the question because I can't read it. Is the same company that Sycamore 2 had to sue? They did all the compression issues. There's, there, the, the issue with okay. two was the soil compressions associated with the sewer. There is no sewer in the south. 
It didn't have anything to do with grading or compaction or anything associated with just the, the, the topo of the land. Mm -hmm. It had to do with soil compressions for the soup. Okay. So it's not an issue in seven because there's no sewer in seven. Yeah. However, will that company ever be involved in uh, future buildings not, of sewers? Not, not as long as um, I'm involved. Oh, okay. But, Thank you. But, you know, but that, but, you know, you know rapidly approaching 60, so God knows how long I'm going to All right, let's, get, let's do uh, Sycamore Vista Unit 9, Homeowners Association. Call it to order. Uh, certify the quorum, please. We've met quorum. Okay. Um, here are your board of directors and your management company. I'd like a motion to approve the annual minutes. Okay, we got a motion there. Uh, and there's a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, there's been a slate of officers. Uh, um, uh, presented. Can I have a motion to approve the slate? Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor say aye. Can I get a motion ratifying all the actions of the directors and the officers? Okay, is there a second? <laughs> See, you can't fall asleep. You have to, you know, I know it's boring, but. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, does anybody want to talk about nine as we move further and further <laughs> away from anything happening with, uh, with the development? Nope. All right, then we'll adjourn that meeting. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order for 10 North. Um, certify the quorum, please. Quorum has been met. Okay, introducing your board, it's the same board, the management company. Um, the approval of the 2012 minutes. There's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Are we tired of the slate of officers? I mean, you know, but. Can I volunteer? No, because there's nothing to do. I think, <laughs> didn't we have a golf one at one time? <laughs> and yeah. He got so bored driving out to my office, he went, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, which I don't blame him. So, um, uh, can I have a motion uh, accepting this lady as presented? Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Okay, can, can we say aye? Aye. 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 Do, do, yeah, so he'll get twice, he'll get twice as much, because twice as much of nothing is nothing. Okay, can I have a uh, motion ratifying uh, all the actions of the directors and officers? Okay. So, in a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Does anyone, like, now we're really getting further out. Anyone want to talk about 10 North? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could go down and do something in regard to that? Um, the, the road kind of ends right at the end of 8 right now, 8.1 and point two, I think, as it, as it comes down there. Um, if the development after 5 is done, if the development for 8.3 happens instead of 7, in order to develop 8.3, that road would probably have to be extended down to where it would then service 10. Um, at a minimum, three years from now, and then with an ongoing development plan in place, maybe sometime in the two or three year period after that. Um, recognizing that I was asked to give a WAG. Um, so with a WAG, that's the best expectation. Um, home sales are such out here that, um, it, it, that it's really hard to predict. I mean, two did sell out. I mean, it's, you know, it's essentially five years, but you know, two was just a piece of dirt when we got here and now it's sold out. Um, and there's homeowners. None of them want to come here, but you know, you know, some who I showed try, up. I try. Um, but um, you know, five could ratchet up. Our expectation, uh, honestly, with Portland is that they're going to sell a um, more reasonably priced product, and that might attract more people. But I would honestly tell you that, um, in terms of doing the demographics, the the bigger push to the, to the development here would be if Rosemont Mine opened. If it opened, you have a thousand workers that are going to be um, 20 minutes from here. You know, so you, you, I mean, there's a good chance you'd capture, even if you captured half of them, you'd have 500 homes that would be sold in a relatively short period of time. But then you won't have the water. Exactly. <laughs> then you have issues with that. The water m might not be an issue based on the improvements to the wells that are being discussed. So. But then again, you know, there's there's demonstrated capacity in H1, which is why the $3 million improvement to H1 would take place. There's 
good capacity in two and three. And then I am continually reminded that if you drill four, it's kind of like you just became an oil man. You never know what you're going to strike. So uh, it's an issue. So, um, so once again, that's to answer your question, six years, maybe? Yeah. Well, that's you know, I'm kind of hope I've been coming here for five years. I don't. I'm, you know, I really, you know, you might see me for another set. All right. Uh, move to adjourn. Um, I get all the motions. I'm just gonna yeah. move to adjourn. I, I ten north. Sorry. All in favor? I'm right. Okay. Uh, ten south. Um, we certify a quorum there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You met everybody before. Can I get a meet uh, motion approving the minutes? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Okay, again, the motion accepting the slate of officers. All in, all in favor say aye. Can I get a motion ratifying all the actions of the directors and the officers? All in favor say aye. Okay. Uh, we are now at the furthest reaches. 10 south. I don't want to talk about it like it's levels of uh, Dante's Inferno, but we're down, at the, we're down at the further reaches now. Anybody have any questions or anybody want to talk about 10 south? <laughs> you may. I or, actually have. Can you take a picture of it and just send it to me? The, the map is available at uh, Chapman. So um, she can email that to you I'll just if you want. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, mine is color coded in, in all so many different ways. And I actually have two of them up because they do different things with the maps because it's, a, it's an issue with me. Yeah. Yeah. Raquel, did you want to? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Not necessarily about any particular number and some condition, but if we build the initial water conditions, everybody was assessed on the map. And maybe, so should they continue to assess everybody instead of just the newcomers? It seems to me, because if you own the lot there, that's, for example, the country can, and they build the number five. I would have to be asked to contribute to five. So when five comes, ten comes, I would like them to contribute to ten. Otherwise, it would be unfair. Now, who would be making this decision? That is a very, first of all, that's a very um, uh, appropriate discussion. Um, it is, in fact, something that will have to be addressed by the, the Sycamore Vista Masters Homeowners Association. Um, and as I said, there are a, a series of ways that would happen. What will happen is all the homeowners are also part of the Sycamore Vista Masters Homeowners Association. So you, you're essentially, if you have a lot in Unit 2 or a home in Unit 2, you're a member of that. But you're also a member of the Sycamore Vista. So what will happen is, when we have the special meeting, is you will receive a um, description of what is being proposed. And it may very well be along the lines of, well, here are a couple alternatives. You know, please provide comments. And we will hope to get input in regard to that. And then there will be a meeting held by the Masters Homeowners Association to implement how that assessment is done. Okay? Now remember, that assessment might not be done against homeowners and lot owners, it might be only done against lot owners. I do understand your, your, your approach there. But it also may be, can you go out and borrow the money and then can we pay the money back over time from everybody and what's it going to cost to borrow? And that's, I mean, at a million three, it's a pretty significant number. So that, that will be addressed. This is just pretty much a discussion to give you a heads up that, you know, that's coming because if you can't secure water connections, <coughs> long term from the city of Tucson Water Department than anybody who just has a lot uh, pretty much has nothing. I mean, you can't, if you can't get a water connection, it doesn't do you any good having a lot. So we're working very hard to make sure that we do have water connections for all of the lot owners in, um, uh, in all of Sycamore District. What time frame do you think this decision will be In terms of how to do the assessments? Yeah. Um, we're, probably going to talk about having a special meeting. As I said, we, we, we're going to want to have some special meetings for uh, separate entities like Unit 5 in order to uh, deal with the special assessments that will be there for um, the phases that will take place. Um, probably sometime in June is what we, you know, what we'll be shooting for in regard to that. 
uh, candidly, what we have to do now is the board has uh, counsel, Wendy Irwin. Wendy looks through and makes sure that we need all, like your new cards now that you're signing out. We'll make sure that we have um, given all the appropriate notices that if there's discussions to be had, we give homeowners and uh, lot owners an opportunity to uh, submit their request and then move forward in, in, in that regard. So um, maybe when you decide on five, you can also create a framework, uh, a methodology to do the rest rather than one at a time, completely isolated, yeah. and then discussion. And that is, that, that's exactly what's being discussed. What's being discussed is what kind of methodology applies. Is it, at, is it that a homeowner gets charged as a meter connects a special fee to uh, uh, reimburse for the cost associated with having secured that meter, except you have to pay the cost up front. And so then do you have to wait? Do you get it from, I mean, obviously I think the issue addressed is, do you get it from 10 South who has a lot and 10 South says, well, you're not gonna get me for 12 years. I mean, you know, so I gotta pay an assessment now. Those, would be, those are all very legitimate discussions and one that we'll want to include as many people in, um, in that discussion as we move forward. But we ultimately will try and come up with a methodology that it's not going to be perfect, we know up front, but you know, tries to address it as, you know, as, as best we can in that regard. So, ideally, what we'd like to do is have a builder that would come in and go, but we'll cover that all for you because we'd like to have it. But we haven't found a builder who would like to buy a thousand lots. So it's just, you know, it's not out there right now. All right. Um, I'll move to adjourn on motion. Okay. All in favor, aye. Um, now we uh, get to Sycamore Vista 8. How many people are here from 8? Okay. Um, 8 is, is, is a little unique in this respect. The um, three of us sitting here have a uh, significant interest in 8 because we own a majority of lots in 823. Um, however, 8 has a lot of homes, and those homeowners really kind of deserve to dictate their entire fate. So as a result of that, we will be stepping out and saying goodbye to all of you so that 8 can take over and have their meeting and run it their way. Um, and I have one question. Okay. And um, so you can all listen to uh, what, what's going on in 8. They actually are a good template for what's going to happen in two, because they have their architectural review committee, they have their um, um, Covenant. covenants committee, uh, they, they have a procedure for hearings um, when there are violations. They, they essentially have put together, through the hard work of all those homeowners, have put together all of those procedures, and my expectation is when we do get unit two to actually have a um, meeting, those homeowners are going to want to follow how it's doing it because they've been very effective in terms of doing it. Okay, one other. Is there any plan within a year or two to correct the south end yeah. of... Where is Connect? Oh, Connect. Oh, Connect the south end of HOA 8 to Sycamore Kent. That is probably not going to happen anytime in the next year or two. Uh, the expectation for that to connect will probably be after five is done, so the lag on that is three years, um, and when future development of either seven or eight point three is discussed, whether that connection will take place at that point. Because there were some maps that even that are like three years old that show like the near Aurelia connecting the Sycamore Canyon. I have all of those. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, much of it is much of it is in fact dictated by the. Uh, thank you for the classes. That's cute. <laughs> Okay, um, but we'll see if I, I'm, I'm only 1.5. Are you 2.3 or 2.5? Or oh, this is perfect. Okay, <laughs> if the CCNRs in our areas change, will it impact all and how long we'll have to get up to speed? Um, the CCNRs will only be, the expectation is they will only be adjusted in five, ultimately seven, remaining portion of 8, 9, 10 north and 10 south to address the issue of what I call targeted assessments. Assessments that only go to lot owners who actually see the benefit associated with the assessment. Um, there is no expectation to change the season ours for any other reason. 
they have two elects to change the CCNRs, it does it by virtue of the vote of the homeowners there. If eight elects to change the CCNRs uh, or implement a covenants committee or implement it, they do it because they, they've come together to do it. There aren't homeowners in five yet. There aren't expected to be homeowners in seven, nine, ten north, ten south for many, many years. So we don't really see the CCNRs as they exist will stay there but for that one issue. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to turn it over to eight and let eight do their um, their approach. Um, Before um, okay. other homeowners leave, I'd like to do a little PSA. Um, the Wildlands, Ur Wildlands Urban Interface Awareness Presentation is going to take place Saturday, May 18th, 10 a.m. at the uh, fire station number two. One of the things they'll do is talk about buffalo grass, what it is, how to identify it, what it can do negatively, and how you can uh, eradicate it. So that's uh, Saturday, May 18th, 10 a.m. station two. Can we follow up with the people who do the buffalo grass? Thanks. We have, yes, I'm not a Okay. Um, if I can to that PSA, we have been working with um, another developer in the region, uh, Jamie Ar Ar Argueta, um, who has a group that volunteers to remove buffalo grass. This is part of what they're doing. Okay, and so we so we are trying to bring two into uh, that to address that, and on a broader basis. We have the management company currently exploring what would be involved to have groups out to uh, assess, if you will, impact of buffalo grass in the undeveloped uh, HOAs 7, 9, 10 North, and 10 South. Um, so you can always check additionally with uh, Chapman, um, and they would be happy to help coordinate um, a Sycamore Vista uh, volunteer group that would work with the, uh, the other group. It is apparently quite an issue, and, and I think everybody in this region is trying to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Sycamore Vista 8. 